We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Hola, Paris Ladapians. ¿Cómo están? We gather virtually today to celebrate once more our weekly artistic ritual in honor of creativity and in solidarity with all those who are themselves facing more difficult positions during these uncertain times. To those of you lucky enough to be out in nature, I commend you for having kept the poetic flame kindling again and again. Many agree that the current halt placed on the planet is actually giving it a breather for once. I've been pondering and reading on what this might all entail once we're eased into the streets next week. Certainly, it'll be an opportunity to share the monumental experiences we have amassed from inner exploration and project the sunbeam dreams across the oceans to reach a vast array of people with the mind's personal kaleidoscope. That being said, the seventh installment of PLU Presents features an assortment of performers from diverse places in the globe who have migrated from their homes and are brought together by one common link, their Latin American roots. Despite the distances and current lockdown situations, these writers and musicians have coalesced to spice up the open mic scene across their diverse environments. Each one of them evokes the flavor of a native land that's bound to be retrieved and which has been always held close to the heart. They represent the character of unity and compromise. We, as an international community, have been constantly striving for. I recommend you sit back and relax, grab your favorite drink, and allow the sounds and images to produce at least a few inklings of our evolving interlinkage. Sitting red upon the bed, the lady, like a panther, panting in the heat. Music plays on in the background. She lets out a desperate sigh and ties her hair up, punishing and tight. Then, like a fierce warrior, goes back into the fight. Her inner voice commands, I must get this right. And once more she bounds up with courage in her step. The music pounds, sweat trickles down her noble head. Her dancing comes from an ocean of emotion full of life, hot and rushing, overflowing, gushing from her skin as purely as crimson blood from veins built by a knife. Oh, dancing muse of madness, dreadful fury, swaying her hips with warlike strife. Her furious tongue lulls, and in her violent frenzy, the battle trance Kali watched me with her lips dripping. Hungry. And where she stepped for a moment, earth trembled beneath her feet. With each movement, she stole victory from the jaws of defeat. Electro is the future, her body pulses on the beat. The closest thing to divinity I have had the chance to meet. Where is my goddess? Why she is here? If eyes could speak, then our eyes spoke in languages more primal than our own. And I would sit her back upon her burnished throne and give her the strength to face the world alone. Has any man yet worshipped like I have? As silver-tongued, the words that enshrine her now, with sweet melancholy tasted moments, each one sweeter than the last for shortness, like kisses on brown skin and sighs of inspiration the shortened breath of the thing, the huffing, heaving, breathing chest that ripples with valid movements, 
expressing something more. Life. I saw a goddess dancing in the room and watched the moonlight play across her neck and lay beneath the stars with her and woke up worshipping the sun. Good evening, my name is Patrick Williamson, I live near Paris and uh, have contributed to the Paris Lit Up in the past and so I'm going to read uh, three poems that I've written in the last month or so um, relate to the lockdown period. First poem is called um, Facing My Face. Listen to the sounds within, the sonar of the fridge, the clicking of the pipes as the heating starts. The irregular clunking of the cooling system, the ticking of the analog clock, the silent waving of trees and the wind outside, the air passing through the hairs in your slightly stuffed nostrils, the rise and fall of your chest, your pulse when earphones plugged in, and the quiet without, broken only by the neighbour unlocking and locking three times each night before the sun sets and the children's shouts drifting through the wall, and your thoughts as you fall asleep, and then the same again, the next day and the next, sans everything, sans fin, but you, where are you, but at the centre of this world that has shrunk, and yet so distant. The first one, and next one, which has gone out with um, a... a uh, just recently with a project at Manchester called Right Where You Are Now, run by Carol Ann Duffy, by the way. Uh, the next one is called The World Goes On Without You. Suddenly I see there are leaves on the trees, for time has been so slow the last few days, locked inside, while nature continues its course, and all we can do is watch and read and work, if that is our chance, until the day is done, and then there is just the silence, and you turn round and round, saying, what shall I do, where shall I start, and then you turn round again, fingering the books and questioning, until the phone suddenly rings, and then after that the silence begins again, but it is no longer the same. And the third one, which was written a few days ago, <clears throat> because we're hopefully going to um, come out of this lockdown in a week's time. Before the clapping starts. There they are again, the walkers under the trees at twilight, when the day is done and the runners pounding down silent roads and dogs padding along, straining at the leash, and the clouds are gathering. It's been another cold day today, as if autumn is upon us, as the sky is so dark. The weather is turning, the tide is turning, one of which is true, but there is a long way to go, and like me the trees are immobile, as if afraid to be shaken by the winds. Come on, step out, reopen, move. But is it time, you say? I opened the window and listen to silence. The city as perfect as the moon on the sea. The wind said nothing, then gently Essoera. The purpose of freedom to make another free. Page 173. Evenings are falling early. You've been just on the turn of the longest night. Only a quarter to five. But the fairy lights were all elite, just in case anyone could forget for one minute. It was Christmas time in Dublin. The silly period. His immune system was low. The doctor had warned. Germs and antigens were probably infecting the atoms of his blood. Atoms 
whose electrons would be radiating and migrating. Mm. Best not to think of that tonight, though. Far better to join in the giddy virus that seizes Ireland in the sparking build-up to Christmas, that of elation and the crack. Other nations may try to be merry, but the Irish cannot stop. They license themselves a carte blanche to eat, drink and spend beyond our reason, a time of overflow and excess. And it doesn't stop at a day or a week. It's a whole darn month of Nalig, the Gaelic word for both Christmas and December. So, the party starts on the 1st and gains momentum until people pop and spill like champagne on Christmas Day. One, I dream I'm not Wallace Stevens. On the phone, the stockbroker perceives, complains he cannot hear me for the singing of birds. 2. I 409 the windowsills in case someone comes over. No one comes over. A wren arranges twigs in my garden shoes. 3. I mentally categorize everything in the house as either pre or post virus. What would Marie Kondo do? 4. I find myself driving around. Is that muscular truck coming toward me full of toilet paper or shrouded bodies? 5. Which one of these shoppers will kill me? A blonde woman coughs in my face and laughs, saying, just kidding. 6. My friends report great Skype cocktail hours. An invisible spider builds a delicate web pouring over my bookshelves. 7. A Facebook game in which people post photos of scenes in which they themselves do not appear. Yes, the world looks just like that. 8. Animals are lucky not to have mirrors. I cover reflections with sheets to subdue the ghost of what I was and binge watch Ghost Nation. 9. I try to winnow out what to cook according to ingredients at hand, an act of counting spaces in a Sunday crossword puzzle. 10. My bank account is dismal. I can no longer fathom a connection between work and making money. Trees unfurl leaves. Government prints dollars. 11. Are we the people, a biological bloom in an ocean of air? Virus animals smell like blood in the water? Robin listens for a peckish breakfast. 12. You men of Dollar General who have gone into the desert and brought us brackish water, who will let out our pants and top off our heads with better dreams? 13. This precise turn of the wheel will never happen again. The blackbird clutches the black bow, fans his tail, and waits. Doug, Doug, there you are, you son of a bitch. Keep your voice down, stupid, I'm hiding. Oh, now I'm supposed to do three sympathy backflips, maybe throw my spine out, because you finally got your hands a little dirty. You know you're a sick gaslighting piece of shit. You coming to me with your sob story? Me? The dude you threw to the goddamn skeletons? Oh, shut the fuck up, Doug. I'm glad that bitch is dead. She was fucking awful to you, man. She cut your balls off about six years ago, stuck him in a pickle jar, and named him Freddy and Eddie. We're in the fucking endgame now, Doug. Sack up. Break the jar and reclaim what is yours. And man, if you took your wife's shattered skeleton and stuck her in one of her summer dresses and you're bringing her breakfast in bed every morning... You know, Doug, you are one nasty motherfucker. I always thought that about you. 
Could you stop the blubbering for like five seconds? I'm trying to tell you some important shit here about the wizard in my ass. Yes, the situation is evolving. I'm fucking losing myself, Doug. Do you get me? Like, sometimes I'm me, and other times they're just big blank patches. How oh, the fuck should I know what I've been doing in the patches? Just because I got a wizard living in my ass doesn't mean I'm a skeletonologist. I woke up this morning wearing this robe and covered in scratches from the nipples down. And I get these fuzzy flashes of being in the middle of massive skeleton orgies, bones clanking together, and the ribs getting snagged like jigsaw puzzles. And I feel this big surge rising up. I ain't like coming, you jackass. Stop feeding your dead wife tea biscuits and fucking listen for a second. This shit is magic. The dead wizard is getting stronger. I know because the gaps are getting longer. I'm fucking losing me, Doug. There's less of me every goddamn day. Soon it'll just be like I said. I'll just be a dead wizard ass puppet. Look, man, I'm scared. Real scared. Like hiding in the corn because dad is shit face scared. And I see the corn waving back and forth and he's hollering and swinging that bottle around like a club. And I'm bent over double trying not to breathe too loud. I'm gonna fucking die, dude. Jesus, do you think that's really the only option? I mean, your garage ain't exactly the most sanitary place on the earth and suddenly you're some kind of ass surgeon? Last time I checked, you couldn't even make a fucking birdhouse. Shit, listen, dude. I'm losing myself again. Come get me. We'll do it your way. I'm at the eastern edge of the Bois de Boulogne, near the Willow. Fucking hurry, dude. Get this wizard out of my ass before the transformation. Who dares commune with my vessel? I see your face, Doug. I see the bruises on your throat. Have one of my minions found you? Someone close to you. Show me. Yes, show me the wife, Doug. There she is. Such a lovely, delicate structure that you have wrapped in her old rags. Look, I beckon and she starts to dance. Do you want her back, Doug? More alive than ever, the skeleton wife of your dreams? Obedient, servile, sleazy? Then bring me the vessel. Bring me the vessel, Doug. Bring me the vessel. Nos encontramos fuera del tiempo En un cuento con luces violetas y alcohol Subimos las escaleras Me empujaste a la cama El baile de tus caderas tu canto de sirena Ahí nuestros cabellos salvajes y negros Bailamos juntos toda la noche Princesa hechicera Vos y tu poción Me vino una adicción A tu cuerpo, a tu boca, a tus labios Despertaste la pasión animal. Tal vez te haya visto en un cuento o en otra realidad. Tal vez nada de esto haya ocurrido y el viento se lo lleve todo si nos encontramos en un cuento distinto o igual. Bailaremos toda la noche otra vez
Todos tenemos algo de profeta. Vi el futuro entre las leanas de ayahuasca, convertido en cuervo, corrí al presente para contárselo a mi cuaderno. Lo vociferé por Nueva York mientras el alcohol era la regla, para apaciguar el alma de quienes sufríamos de soledad entre multitudes. Hoy mi compromiso no cambia, pero me distraigo menos para poder consentirme los ojos mientras me alivio siendo el sueño de Luz Mira. Los gatos me preguntan si tengo miedo. Lo vendí para poder pagarme una mochila. Es que uno poco se equivoca si pone las cosas donde corresponden. Por eso, ni para qué esforzarse dando dosis de moralina cuando uno mismo es víctima y reflejo, ángulo de 90 grados, perpendicularidad y plano cartesiano. Sigo intentando olvidarme de las estupideces que aprendí en la escuela. La palabra que yo cargo solo para mí, hombre de alma rota. La palabra que cargo me pesa en la mochila. ¿Para qué la tormenta social si no encuentro refugio en la tempestad que soy? La ilusión es que mi mirada sea esperanza cuando vea vacía hacia el futuro. Tristemente, los destellos que me llegan solo me ponen a temblar. Guardo mi palabra y profecía. Solo espero que el futuro cambie. Llego tarde. Los nueve monstruos del poemario de poemas humanos de el poeta peruano César Vallejo. Y desgraciadamente el dolor crece en el mundo a cada rato. Crece a 30 minutos por segundo paso a paso. Y la naturaleza del dolor es el dolor dos veces. Y la condición del martirio carnívora voraz es el dolor dos veces. Y la función de la hierba purísima es el dolor dos veces. Y el bien de ser dolernos doblemente. Jamás hombres humanos hubo tanto dolor en el pecho, en el vaso, en la cartera en la carnicería, en la aritmética. Jamás tanto cariño doloroso, jamás tan cerca remetió lo lejos, jamás el fuego nunca jugó mejor su rol de frío muerto. Jamás, señor ministro de salud, fue la salud más mortal. Y la migraña extrajo tanta frente de la frente que el mueble tuvo en su cajón dolor, el corazón en su cajón dolor, la lagartija en su cajón dolor. Crece la desdicha, hermanos hombres, más pronto que la máquina diez máquinas. Crece con la res de Rousseau, con nuestras barbas. Crece el mal por razones que ignoramos y es una inundación con propio barro, propio líquido y propia nube sólida. Invierte el sufrimiento posiciones. Da función en que lo amor acuoso es vertical al pavimento. El ojo es visto y esta oreja oída. Y esta oreja da nueve campanadas a la hora del rayo y nueve carcajadas 
a la hora del trigo y nueve cánticos a la hora del llanto, nueve látigos, nueve rayos menos un grito. El dolor nos agarra, hermanos hombres, por detrás, de perfil, y nos aloca en los cinemas, nos clava en los gramófonos y nos desclava en los lechos. Cae perpendicularmente sobre nuestras cartas. Y es muy grave sufrir. Puede uno orar. Pues de resultas del dolor, hay algunos que nacen, otros crecen, otros mueren. Y otros que nacen y no mueren. Y otros que sin haber nacido, mueren. Y otros que no nacen ni mueren, son los más. Pues de resultas del dolor, estoy Triste hasta la cabeza y más triste hasta el tobillo. De ver al pan crucificado, al nabo ensangrentado llorando, a la cebolla, a la harina, a la sal hecha polvo, al vino nexiomo. Tan pálida la nieve, al sol tan ardido. ¿Cómo, hermanos humanos, no deciros que ya no puedo, y no puedo con tanta inversión, tanta lagartija, tanto cajón y tanta sed de sed? Señor ministro de salud, ¿qué hacer? Ah, desgraciadamente, hombres humanos... Hay, hermanos, muchísimo que hacer. Saludos, gente. Es Kevin de este lado. Mi nombre artístico es Vinque. Me llaman Vinque. Me gusta ese rap y voy a rapear. Dice. Dice. Yeah. No es una base o par de frases que suenen bonitas Para montar la del mejor persona o con rap evita Porque el que me toca letras reaccionan cual dinamita Es que seas tú no lo que dices Los raperos narcisistas cuidado se agitan Solo decía Vi muchos MCs alcancía con complejo del mesía Los intereses propios conducen en una vía Te estrellarás como yo si intentas encajar un día Entre arpías que cuentan arpías Regresivamente una mente menos puede sumarle una mordida De esa tajada fría o de la alcahuetería Me lo dijeron mis pies que ni lo imaginaría tanta perversión y tanto corrinche por eso comunicamos con canción no coja chance si hay bochinche atención y corazón camino con los mismos niches en la juega para cuando gire el switch esto es más que porque quise es más el rap se convirtió en mi teacher le dio calma a mi alma negra pechiche esto es más que porque quise involucrado por meter las narices un paso atrás ni para meterle a las rumbas del grupo niche bendecido me siento por la inherencia y las piedras de orientación en forma de influencia son mi sendero seguí como por inercia y dejé de creer en las coincidencias Muchas veces caí pero aprendí con resistencia Que el que pierde la pelota escupe y baja la defensa Muchas veces caí pero aprendí con resistencia No tropieza con la misma piedra el que la piensa Piensa No, no tropieza con la misma piedra el que la piensa Ya Ya Mis frinos dicen que soy feminista para cuadrar una nena Dicen que soy feminista porque crecí con mi abuela Pa, que te puedo decir, esta vida es candela Más allá de lo que proyectan las novelas La forma de minimizar el sudor de una guerrera sin pala Cosificar sin pudor cada sector de un templo con alma Y es que cuando nadie dice nada, la duda queda sembrada Yo solo recuerdo que la deuda no está saldada No traje primicia, pero sí ganas de practicar la verdad Antes de que la vuelvan trizas, cenizas o lo siguiente porque quien cree poseer la crea poder no dejaremos que lo cuente Utilizando bases como puente para no ser devorados por lagartos Ni arrastrados por corrientes, vertiéndole mi alma a este recipiente En forma de palabra y Mr. Data dándole vida sin mente Como siempre, de ese lado hay gente que camella siempre A ellos dedico pragmático principalmente A quien escuchó cada tema incluso antes de que lo invente Y a cada posible oyente y por mí, voy llenando mi cuaderno de sazón, vivo por la misericordia de la buena vibración, ni Tarzán, ni Goliat, ni Sansón, Billy Mosca para no marchar en ese grupo de los que no son. ¿Por 
que son y no son Aquí marchas al son y los que no son Porque bailamos con son, pero no es reggaetón That was magnificent, wasn't it? Don't go anywhere just yet. Stay tuned for more exciting performances coming up in round two. Love thy neighbor as thyself, Jesus said. He'd be real pleased with me. Our neighbors, Harvey and Sally Wilkinson, I just love them to death, especially Sally. Now, I got a lot of respect for Harvey, too. I have. He's a great guy. But so am I. What a great guy Jerry is, people say. So why him? He can have her any time he likes. Every night she is beside him there in the marriage bed. All that son of a bitch has got to do is lean across to have her. The thought of him lying there in the dark with that stupid, wispy little moustache of his, the fucking faggot getting ready to make his move is more than flesh and blood can stand. I am not bitter. No, sir, I am not. I can honestly sit here with my hand upon my dick. No, no, uh, with, with my hand upon my heart and say I am free of all traces of bitterness. And yet, even now, knowing that as I speak he may be humping the shit out of her, fills my soul with such outrage. It is a crime against nature itself, the ass on that broad. They got a real nice place, the Wilkinsons, with a nice pool. And in the summer they invite us over for barbecues. The kids play together. We hang out by the pool, drinking daiquiris. And I say to him, this is a great daiquiri, Harvey. You know, you're wasted in the, uh, in the insurance business. You should have been a barman. <laughs> so we're sitting there, drinking, yucking it up. And there she is, Sally, in her swimsuit by the pool, just lolling there. And oh, my God. I get such a fucking boner just looking at the broad. It is as much as I can do not to ejaculate there and then into my goddamn daiquiri. I am a happily married man and have been for many, many years. Jean is a remarkable woman. She speaks French. She is an outstanding cook and she is a highly respected member of the local community. I love my wife. I love my family. And yet I gotta sit there in the Wilkinson's living room because they also invite us over for cocktails. Sally perched opposite me, her skirt hiked up around her goddamn thighs, giving me a front row view of her polka dot bikini briefs. And I am supposed to sip my mint julep and make small talk. What well, all I want to do is to tear the clothes off of the broad and ravish her. And I know that at such times Harvey's eyes are upon me, rejoicing in my discomfiture. I'm a man, a.k.a. homo. And if I had been a homo, it would have been okay. But the good Lord, unfortunately, in his wisdom, had other plans for me. And so here I am, an all full-blooded, horny, all-American Hello everyone, this is Blake Benham, uh, coming at you from Los Angeles, California. Uh, to begin, thank you very much to PLU for all of the creative content that you all have been putting together, uh, for putting this together. Um, it's very much appreciated, I know at least for myself, uh, having that inspirational uh, outlet is, is good and it's, it's motivating to see you all doing so much during this time, doing what you can, doing so much given what we can at this time. Um, so thank you. Uh, so today I wanted to share a poem with you, um, which was inspired by the graveyard, something I saw at the graveyard outside of my house where I was living in Paris, France. 
uh, the suburbs of Paris, France. Uh, one day I was looking out over this graveyard and I saw a family mourning over the loss of a loved one um, at, a, at a grave. And it was curious to me that uh, somehow that, that, that physical presence of the grave before them uh, inspired more memories of that individual than perhaps usual. That somehow this grave, this physical location was a conduit, contained memories somehow, you know, somehow was inspiring them with thoughts of that individual, which perhaps ordinarily would not be inspired just in their everyday activities. And that was curious to me. Uh, and so I I was considering this idea, kind of thinking about it. And in, throughout that train of thought, I arrived at this interesting idea, uh, which serves as the motivation for my poem, which was, what is it that kind of makes that distinction between the living and the dead. Of course, we have the locomotive aspects. They can't, they're, they're, they're stationary. Their body is no longer functioning biologically. But what about mentally? You know, how is it that, that this, this, this end to the natural cycle kind of made them seem so distant and that being in their presence somehow brought them a little closer? Uh, so that distinction kind of was an interesting one to me, and and what I what came out of that uh, consideration was this poem. This poem is called "A Blossom in the Graveyard." The graveyard serves as a reminder that above all, humanity values memory. As the dead complete their cycle and return to nature, the living and above, receiving the spiritual influences contained by the organic, sanctified pit before them. The emotionally halved husband warms his bleak reality in the folds of the embracing recollection radiated from his wife's terrestrial birth. The destitute son feels purpose, listening to the wise words echoing from his father's funerary stone. The pious woman bears her suffering with grace, receiving comfort that her sister's dormant soul awaits salvation within her macabre masonry. He asks, To what is it that the dead return? To earth, land and dust, to particles, atoms and energy, to nothing, peace and silence. Return requires that one, at some other time, came from another place. Otherwise, to leave would suffice. How do you mean return? How do you mean leave? In other words, why and how should the impartial, infinite universe squander its scarce resources on something as transient as me? Because there is no waste, no ascension. Man's greatest achievement is to conjure form from nothing. To denominate and create out of nothing is contradictory. To allocate meaning is objectively subjective. To distinguish being from existence demands biased representation. And yet you are, nevertheless. The graveyard serves as a reminder that man exists as memory, not but one's individual blend of experience and reflection. That amidst the infinite graveyard of existence, consciousness uniquely blooms. And so there's my poem. Thank you very much. Shout out again to PLU, and I uh, hope you all are doing well. Until next time. Thanks. May 1st, 2020. Revels now ended. Beneath our window, a cat mewled in torment of heat. At times almost sounding like a human baby. Pent up lovers spin themselves, fending off death's head particles, minuscule but deadly. 
as Trist in Blackout Blitz London or Warrens of Gut in Stalingrad long ago. In plague year 2020, Old Yoke's home, residents, glom doppelganger presidents, one pork eyed and ruddy, snuffling for profits even among corpses of NYC. The other, hero businessman, saving America from commie degenerates. Somewhere, flash conditioners grin fiendishly at sleight of hand. A president puppeted, schools, churches, and NRA subverted. Wolf packs of whites and browns and blacks, ready at a moment's notice to tear one another apart. Each suburb, a cell block now, each inmate cut off, flayed away a little at a time by edicts. So when the new normal comes, no one will remember the old normal. When finally our countless empty images of eternity have worn to blurbs on the shopping channel and our remote controls quit, the whisperer will say, we've done it to ourselves at the end of the first trial run. She had a two-year-old child and a husband she wished she'd never married. They lived in a small flat on a tight budget. Her daughter, whom she cherished, was full of life. She tried to take sustenance from that source of well-being, but she was numb. She felt herself sinking into a dark abyss, losing the ability to hold a conversation or express an opinion. She went through the motions grocery shopping on automatic pilot, staring at the shelves, wondering what to cook when she was falling apart. She didn't have the pieces of the puzzle to make sense of what was happening, nor a soul to turn to for guidance. The depression was so overwhelming, it was like a creeping paralysis. The sadness and helplessness so deep she couldn't cry. Every so often, when no one could hear her, she let out a scream. In spite of the rising panic, she had to keep functioning for the sake of the child, but it was becoming unbearable. Was suicide the only end to the nightmare? How could she abandon her daughter? Maybe the child would be better off without her. Or perhaps the only solution was that they both die. That was out of the question. Oddly, the impossible option of suicide and where and how she might carry it out was the only thing that kept her going. She dismissed each method one by one as unreliable. Her incompetence would only make matters worse. One night, she dreamt she was in the kitchen, empty of its furniture, except for a white table at which she sat before an open book. Sunlight filtered through a muslin curtain, inundated the room. She felt a serenity akin to bliss. The next morning she woke up to the same gloom, remembering the dream, the only brief solace she'd known in months. She kept the vision alive, rekindling it daily for as long as she could, until it faded. Although the depression persisted, she no longer felt the urge to scream. Months later, as slowly as she had descended into the darkness, she began to ascend imperceptibly at first. New people came into her life. Someone got her a small job backstage in the theatre, 
sewing buttons and hems on costumes. Still barely able to speak, it was all she was capable of at the time. Caught up in the hustle bustle, they let her be. The slightest kindness was balm to her invisible wounds. The director of the play asked her to make a bird to put in a cage as an accessory. She desperately tried to make one. It was a pitiful attempt. She didn't know how to make the wings, so she drew them on the fabric. Fortunately, the director changed his mind and decided that an empty cage would be more enigmatic. Light and sound engineer took her under his wing and invited her to share a house he was just moving into with two others. She left her husband and got a spring job as a tourist guide. That September, when her daughter started school, she found a job as a teacher. One day, walking past an open church, she was drawn in by its peace and quiet. She picked up a candle, put coins in the box, lit it, and stood there watching its flickering flame, tears trickling down her cheeks. She had come out of the dark tunnel at last. This is Vivian in Paris, in Montparnasse, with a poem called Prayer in a Pandemic. Shade me from the spray in the air that could kill me. Shade me from the kissless land of masked mouths that could waste me. Shade, save me from the tight lasso of my mind that could twist me. Shade, save me from my night voice that talks to itself and haunts me. Shh, aid me. To dance like a dervish, to spin in the sun, till ribbons and bows flow from my hair, till the tangles of fear are flung far afield, till all that is needless flies from me. Shh, aid me on the bleached sand down by the shore to become the wave that breaks and is no more, is sucked back by the surge. I am no more, yet ever one with the swell and the sound of the sea. The village is locked down, but only I can tell tonight. I'm the only witness to the dark, still lane and the closed pub. From across the fields, I can hear the sea. Lights glow in a few homes, but the swings and tennis nets of the Celtic Haven holidays are slack and unused. The freshly painted houses and stable blocks will be empty this season. The place had been a turkey farm which supplied the QE2 and my mother. Each Christmas for two decades, she'd drive up to us with a bird on the back seat. Mum died years back, and the house sales going through. Eleven years ago to the week, Willie Bush, in her 91st year, as it should be, her heart gave out as ours dare not now the hospitals full to breaking. So many stars tonight in a perfect black sky that brings light from dead worlds and pastimes. 
and stars at my feet. The first flush of wild garlic with its fresh stink of sweet, sour breath, announcing the cruelest month. My Aunt Annie, a Pembrokeshire charmer, would have been out foraging and wrenching them up to gather the bulbs for potions and cures. Warts, agues, women's troubles. For pennies, she'd ministered to family and neighbours. A farm girl before the First War, the plague of 19. Then an ex-soldier's wife and a small holding near Kilgetty. There's the plough, Orion's belt, the North Star, and countless others I don't recognise. No winking lights from the transatlantic plains. Now we are shrinking into ourselves, cancelled flights, the world curling back into itself for safety and in fear. This is the reckoning point, the date, all manner of events and lives will be defined by this year. Though the fields at the back of us are newly ploughed, a flurry of gulls and crows jabbing at the fresh worms, this afternoon there were hens let loose and scattered across the empty road, one perched on our wall. This county's a long way from anywhere and closed to visitors now. Police run checks. Our headlands been an Iron Age promontory fort, a narrow strip to defend with the sea at your back. In the war, Mum's friend Reg had held a rope over the edge of white sheet rock above the crashing sea for schoolmates to raid the crevice nests for gulls' eggs. Big and rich. But tasting of fish. Still, we was hungry. I wake to light, pitching longer, finger marking a poem of Miguel Hernandez, revolutionary of the Spanish Civil War, driven by silence inside this virus to read quiet words in Bly's English a poem responding to news his infant son starved with only onions to eat while Hernandez was terminally jailed. My desire for words is not satisfied. There's no name for these bells ringing without stop since Hernandez's son found sucker in onion milk, threw back his head and laughed. Our protests for the poor are smothered by fat white layers though our tongues are clappering and green. These words are translation of English into English. You have milk and we the snowy blood of onions. We're alone in the white boxes you built for us with our green money. This evening I'll walk in the garden and admire banks of roses that are widely admired. But beneath them, where the side does not go, wild onions leap forward, their bald seeds gifts to sparrows. We will always be here, but your son will not. That singular and specific beginning, vowed in light, bright pain, even the glory of roses cannot starve. Let's make a movie down in Rio de Janeiro Cinelandia And forget about the meetings with the pharaohs In Alexandria Play everybody 
bar in Corcovado She wore a bracelet, now a t-shirt from the weekend Wraps her soul in grey Soul embrace will shake off the weakened spirit's rancor, but it's just another day. On the Avenida Rio Branco, Reflexión. Y yo con ganas de plasmarme en literatura excelsa, con ganas de competir por el Nobel con un conglomerado de letras finas que muestren la semejanza del hombre y la porquería, que ilustren con sapiencia las bondades de la belleza, que reflejen las virtudes de las que carezco, pues entre mis límites y el Nobel, entre mis ganas y lo excelso, se extiende un mar de agonías irreconciliables. Yo. Mi sueño es producto de la estafa que es la vida. Montoncitos de mentiras puestos en un rincón. El mediocre trabajo de quien barre y no recoge, pensando en limpiar al rato, rectificar la omisión. Y allí soy mugre haciendo estorbo. Cuando el patrón note mi injustificable y mala posición, mandará a cualquier fulanito a tirarme. Y yo, hecho migas, esperando en la esquina o bajo la alfombra, añejándome con la mota del tiempo y la desidia, jactándome de la vagancia, risa que me produce la rebeldía, esa misma que me impulsa a hacer nada, mugrero, estorbo, 
a esconderme de la escoba que me quiere recoger. vienen del centro es el mismo siempre bien adentro centro verde sabor a tiempo color verde Quizá la jaqueca de un dios vacío, un dios por donde entra todo lo inservible y no tiene ya nada más que decir. Soy un 
resto de la carne, abierto como el misterio del hambre y su discurso luminoso, la inquietud del sendero frente al cruce de caminos, carne que simula un peso sostenido del tiempo, con la vena ligera y la firme bocada, fresca a levantarse con el océano, volante, estremecida, dale los pies del gato, la indiferencia del río estancado, ahí en la penumbra del rito mal gestado, a una piel gastada de estereotipos, un cuerpo magullado de tiempo roto, los ojos de la carne, ciegos hace tiempo, la cruz que no lleva sangre ni luz, soy el manifiesto de la carne, cuchillo de pan, mensaje no abierto, el libro con el plástico enrojecido de polvo, cierta mañana con la alcoba en llamas, sueño volcado en su deseo y nada sabe, sueño lo jodido de un mundo de luz blanca, la cicatriz que no se da el tiempo y crece, crece como las uñas vueltas al dedo y ave, la carne es un espíritu venido a menos, recuérdalo cuando el espejo te delate, no hay color en su espíritu, solo eco, el negro que guarece es total, absoluta alma enamorada de vacío, cuando el universo nos mira, pasa de largo, será que el ritmo vibra para las visiones del lobo, para que no olvide el precio de su piel, porque la carne no es perfecta, cuando el impulso de la casa y comió y abrió cuerpos manifiesto total, todo lo que conocemos es muerte, prolongada, diminuta, imperceptible, soy el manifiesto de la cara en el tiempo, del arte como estrella herida, de los reparos mecánicos, del café corto con hielo, por favor, de los coches semáforo prestos al atropello, del árbol y sus raíces hinchadas de bulimia, agua, wannabe flesh, tiempo, hashtag, wannabe flesh, espíritu, hashtag, wannabe flesh, galaxia, hashtag, wannabe flesh, hashtag, mosca hija de puta sal de mi tostada, hashtag, wannabe flesh, porque de la flesh venimos y a la verge nos vamos, canta el indio, hashtag, wannabe flesh, canta la posmodernidad, hashtag, wannabe flesh, carga el viento corazones, hashtag, wannabe flesh, cágate los muertos de la carne, porque hashtag, wannabe flesh, los mejores entes de mi generación, hashtag, wannabe flesh, aunque realmente, sean el sopor del sueño de un bebé incubado, le rodea el silencio, el pip, pip, que le hace respirar, la sonda que le retiene, manifiesta el deseo de ser vida, y no esa muerte coladita por abrirse paso al mundo, andar como lo hacen los simios y sus descendientes, cruzar océanos, subirse a la atmósfera, oprimir el botón rojo de la estrella de la muerte, game over, game over, game over, hashtag wannabe flesh, insert coin, enjoyed the seventh showcase of our amazing Parisian <clears throat> worldwide artistic manifestation and continue in the good company of books and beloveds as we course through what is week eight of confinement for most of us at least the light at the end of the tunnel my colleagues have referred to in previous outings is now at hand so in isolated communion May we find peace and solace in the fact that we are to live in a better world from now on. Remember that wherever you are, you'll be able to collaborate with us through this channel 
and on our yearly magazine, which is calling for submissions for its eighth edition. Take a look at the video coming up next for more info. I look forward to reuniting and sharing songs, stories, and good energy, for that is our primordial nourishment. Thank you for watching. Hasta la victoria siempre. what surprises me the most Bilge. Bilge. is the way things end the world has ended. and nothing changes. When the internet crashed, our species groaned. Gradually, we made holes in the earth and planted seeds. Sometimes what surprises me the most 